Hi, everyone. I'm Tess. I'm a compulsive eater. I weigh and measure three meals a day from the gray sheet, write them down, commit them to my sponsor or another qualified person, and I don't eat in between my meals no matter what. I'm abstinent by the grace of God and the support of all of y'all. My abstinence date is September the 14th, 1998, and I want another day. I did not come into gray sheet uh, at my heaviest weight, but I just wanted to show these little pictures. I'm showing pictures of a heavy woman that I don't come from a light case of this illness. I have a disease that is not about losing 10 pounds for the prom. It's a disease that actually tries to kill me on a daily basis. So I'm going to tell you what it was like to the best of my ability, what happened and what it's like now. And in a in brief, I ate and I suffered. It was abject poverty of the soul, mind, body, spirit. Uh, I ate until I couldn't stand up straight, lay flat, uh, walk upright. I'd have to sleep propped up. I'd be so feverish. I was scared. Um, that's what my, that's what compulsive eating did to me. Um, what happened was I was at the jumping off point where I couldn't see life with compulsive eating or without it. So I crawled into the rooms of Gray Sheeters Anonymous, battered, broken, and bruised. I um, needed a lot of help, and I still do. And a day at a time, I'm still abstinent. And what my life is like now, I suit up and show up. I'm a worker among workers a family member among family members, not the family member everybody's worried about that they might die, not the family member who's a size two one day and a size 18 the next. Um, so I'm really, really super grateful to be abstinent. Um, I believe I was born a compulsive overeater. I never had a bite of sugar that I didn't want another bite. I um, believe I have the allergy to sugar, grain, starch, and carbohydrates. And if I eat or drink those substances, it sets up a craving for more of the same and a mental obsession. And I can't get enough. And I go from the quick trip to the grocery store, to the restaurant. I do ritualistic eating. I uh, have to get rid of the wrappers in um, public garbage cans because I'm so ashamed of what I've done that I, uh, you know, I don't want to face it. So that's the kind of eater I am in my home. I also witness some crazy behavior. And I will say this, I do have trauma in my past, but I was well loved and I knew it. I didn't have a father, but I had all this extended family that loved me and I'm still a compulsive overeater. So um, I'll just say that. And we lived with my grandparents, my mom and I. My grandfather was over 300 pounds at his heaviest. My mom weighed about 85 during my formative years. So I saw some crazy behavior with food. Uh, so if you could like breathe in the air and catch compulsive eating, I could have gotten it. But um, but I really have the... Uh, the compulsion for the food. And my grandma was just a regular old dieter. She gained a few, she dieted. 
And one of the things she did on a diet was take laxatives. And as a little kid, I thought, note to self. And later on, I would come to binge, animalistic, savage eating. And then I'd go to the drugstore, get suppository laxatives. So I could try to get rid of the binge, the shame, and the weight. So in the beginning, I, uh, oh, we had like, we had this thing in the basement that would shake your weight off. And uh, so that was way back in the day. My grandma believed uh, if you rolled a rolling pin up and down your abdomen, you'd lose weight. Hey, I've tried it all. Um, You know, if somebody said put saran wrap around your body, I did it. And I tried all the teenage diets. I remember starting to try to control my weight at age eight. And I tried to control it through an outpatient eating disorders unit at a local at a hospital. I tried to control it by smoking. I just became a fat smoker. I tried to control it through therapy. I thought if I got to the bottom of my mommy and daddy issues, I'd wake up thin. I left therapy fat um, and I'm in therapy again. So I'm not knocking therapy. I'm just saying it wasn't a solution to my compulsive eating. I, I tell you, here's the deal. I had I also moralized my food like crazy, like I heard gluttony was a sin and there were seven deadly sins. And I thought I was a pretty bad sinner because I couldn't put down the fork. I can't tell you how many times I've asked God to forgive me for what I ate. Uh, I I really had a moral issue. And so I I found myself finally in regular OA um, where they said, ask your higher power what your food plan should be. I got a physical allergy, a mental obsession, and a spiritual sickness. There was no way I was going to clearly hear my higher power's will for me. Although I prayed for it a lot, and I ate a lot, and I suffered a lot. And finally, God did talk to me. And uh, on paper, it was a gray sheet of paper with how much to eat. And it came with a sponsor. And um, I'm really, really thankful for that. I suffered humiliations by what people said to me. And I'm a nice girl from way back. I would nice you to death. So you never said a word about my weight. But somehow people did. And I studied acting and I was in a professional actor training program. They said, if you don't lose weight, you'll play teddy bears your whole life. And essentially that was true when I had a career. Um, they, They asked that I report my weight every week. So um, you know, I heard you have such a pretty face. I heard, don't wear horizontal stripes. I heard, don't wear your shirts tucked in. I don't know. There are bigger people nowadays, but back in the day when you're four, 10 and a half, I, my prom dress was like a size 15. That was big back then. Uh, Nobody was saying you look mighty thin today. So it was really hard to be shoved into clothes, uh, to be have people say things. And I came dragging into the rooms in Kansas City, Missouri. And the meeting was at a church called Hope. Can you believe it? Hope Lutheran Church. I had no hope, and it doesn't seem that there are anybody counting days, but um, if you have no hope, this is the place for you. You can borrow other people's hope. Hope is not required. 
to turn the scale off at 4.0. And I borrowed other people's hope. They showed me how to eat, how to make my food delicious. Five minutes. Thank you. They showed me how, um, and see, I had been so badly when, before I came into the program, I had to have bulk. And people showed me how to bulk up my food. And if I ate like that, like I did in my mid-30s when I came in, if I ate that way today at 58, I would pay because I would be in so much pain. But enough about my digestion. I digress. They helped me and um, I didn't eat. And when I got that full, I was used to going out and getting laxatives. So I'd have to make phone calls and say, I feel the urge to purge. One of the main tools I used was was the phone. And Kansas City was a vibrant community then. And I called those people. And one of the people gave me numbers to people in Cambridge and people in New York. And I called them. My phone bill was higher back then than it is now. If you had a day of abstinence, I wanted to talk to you Um, because, you know, if you had any more time, I wanted to talk to you. And I was fragile, fragile and crazier than I am now. People were not always nice to me. And I still kept coming back because they were abstinent. They said, don't eat. Don't eat. They didn't enable me. It wasn't honey, honey, baby, baby. It's okay to eat. So that was the tough love. Um, But I also got a lot of TLC. And I began to experience what I had been seeking all along. And that was relief. Relief from the merciless obsession. Relief from the physical cravings. And what I started to crave was another day. In another day, I do work the tools, but for me, abstinence is a holy mystery. I don't deserve it. I'm not better than anybody. I do ask for help. I thank at night. I sponsor and I'm sponsored. I read the literature. I go to the meetings. I try to do what I can as a defense against the first compulsive bite, but there's a lot I don't know. And um, so y'all are helping me build my defense today. And I'm so grateful to remember where I come from. I don't want that life. I did not get the house, the dog, the white picket fence, and the car. I got showing up and being an average bozo on the bus. And that's a miracle for this eater. So I want to stay in the miracle. I want another day. I'm committed to another day. Enjoy your food. Thanks for listening to me, and I pass.